Hi everyone. I would like to present a work on which we have been working on together with Rodrigo Rivera and Evgeny Burnaev, graph neural network for model selection using time series data. So the problem itself is pretty widespread and common. We know that no model fits all possible time series. Also, there are no guidelines which model to pick for a particular time series. And it is unfeasible to test all possible models for a new time series data. Uh, that's why we need some kind of a system or tool which will recommend a model given new time series data based on its structure. Uh, however, of course, there are certain challenges. The first one is this topic is not very widespread in the community. So there are zero to none reviews or literature about model selection based on uh, its associated structure. Also, uh, it's not clear how to transform a time series into an underlying graph. So the overall aim is to construct graph neural network model, which should provide, uh, which should recommend a model based on, uh, which should recommend a model uh, based on its time series data as an input. So given, basically given new time series data, we construct a graph and then we see which model is best for its associated time series. The pipeline is pretty widespread and common. We have a reference set with time series data and relation graph, relationship graph. We have we split time series into train and test period period and with with that we basically identify the best models for a particular time series sample. Uh, thus, we have a time series and a stated best model label for each time series sample. With these uh, labels, we can train GNN, which will provide a model recommendation based on a new time series data. The model input is uh, cons consists of three parts. The first one is relationship graph, which has binary encodings of entity relations, uh, relationships. And uh, we know that if entities are connected, they may show some similar patterns or be, be both affected after if even one entity has been changed. Uh, the second input is LSTM embeddings for the time series. We take last hidden state as the sequential embedding. The third step is pretty novel, uh, is how we transform the time series into uh, its associated graph. Uh, as, a out, as an output, we provide as an output mass model for the corresponding time series, and also we uh, output next value, or next value, or set of the next values we forecast basically the following value. Speaking about the third part, time series to graph conversion, there are three parts, uh, three steps in this, uh, in this conversion. The first one is decomposing the time series into trend and noise, noise using single spectrum analysis. The next step is constructing a graph given uh, a construct in a graph using visibility graph um, approach. We construct it as following. So the two points are connected on a graph. If we can draw a straight line from the first point bar to the second point bar without crossing any intermediary uh, bars, bars of the time series points. And what is interesting is that even if scale down or scale up the bar with time series plots, we still will have the same graph. It is very convenient and uh, and even if we rotate the, the time series plot, we will still have the same graph, which is uh, very useful for the further analysis. But still, uh, even, uh, but still, after this step, we 
usually come come up with uh, quite an enormous data set. So, for example, given time series with the uh, th thousand points, we will have a matrix matrix with thousand by thousand. Um, we will create a matrix with dim dimensions of thousand by thousand, and if we will have a thousand time series samples, we will have thus thousand matrices each with a million cells in it, which is clearly unfeasible uh, to operate, analyze, to work on um, in, uh, in, in even in industry setting. So we need to come up with a way to reduce the dimensions. And uh, graph embedding you works in this case. If we use node to back with uh, random walk, we will reduce the dimensions and we will have a nice vector for it, it's as each associated graph, which will serve as a module input. So thus we have covered a step of converting time series into, uh, into graph. And the next step uh, is uh, how we construct a graph neural model uh, itself. So there are two ways to uh, model the relation strength function. The first one is implicit step. So in this relation strength function, there are um, basically two, three, three terms, several terms. The first term measures the similarity between this, the time series and the current time step. So the intuition is that the most similar the stocks are at the current time, it's more likely that the relation will impact the values in the near future as well. So we use in a product to estimate the similarity. And the next point, the next term is an unlinear regression model on the relations, where each element denotes the weight of a relation in general, and also have uh, a bias term. So since both terms of this function are directly interpretable, we call it as explicit modeling. In the ex implicit modeling, uh, we put the sequential embeddings and the relation vector into a fully connected layer to estimate the relation strength. Then we normalize the outputs using a softmax, softmax function, which also endows it with more non-linearities. Since this way of interaction is implicitly captured by the parameters, we call it as implicit modeling. Uh, to test we, our model, we have um, use three baselines, three main baselines, which are covered in, in the literature. The first one is analyzed maximum likelihood. Uh, the disadvantage of this baseline is that it can, we can only test it on only on linear, linear, linear models. The next model, uh, the, the next baseline is Carfold cross-validation. So we basically test all possible models and pick the best one uh, for each time series. The next is meta-learning. We construct a data, uh, we construct features from a given time series, and then we train a classifier to on, on those features to choose the best model given you time series with features. We have tested our model on, on two data sets, on two sets of data sets. The first one is commercial data set with uh, around 250,000 transactions spending for 100 days. Uh, each transaction uh, time series represents audit amount of the product. Uh, as a relation graph, a re relationship graph, we have binary encoded supplier to restaurant graph with 400 suppliers and 3,000 restaurants. Uh, and uh, usually, in this case, the naive model works most of the time, but still, in some cases, for some products, uh, other other models win by a large margin. Margin, so we can just uh, use only one model. We actually need to test for every product and select the best model each time. The next, the next set of data sets are Nasdaq and Nises.data. data. So we have thousand and two thousand tickets for associated uh, for a particular you know, stock market, uh, stock data set. Um, 
And uh, as a relationship graph, we have binary encoded sector industry graph with the uh, sectors and industries. Tickets are associated, are connected if they belong basically to the same sector or the same industry. So given those two data sets, we have run the ex experiments and we have come up with uh, following results. Uh, so we compared basically against two main baselines, model recommendation and order prediction. Uh, random cross-validation, meta-learning and penalized likelihood serve as the model recommendation baselines. And optimal hyperparameters were selected via cross-validation on the same parameter grid. Uh, based on the results, we can conclude that following the properties of the proposed model, we can conclude following the properties. Following properties. Uh, so on all data sets, GNN with implicit relationship at the cost of uh, on all data sets, GNN with explicit relationships performed slightly better than GNN with implicit relationship at the cost of uh, increased computational time. Therefore, the usage of explicit relationship, relationships is preferable. For the stock data, GNN model has not shown noticeable improvements compared to the baseline approach, and the LSTM embeddings actually do not seem to be ideal for, for the data set. But still, uh, SMAPA for stock data for GNN is on par with other methods. And regarding the commercial data set, GNN has performed similarly to the best model. For the stock market, GNN has shown mediocre results in the model recommendation. The penalized likelihood approach greatly surpassed GNN. The meta learning has also performed better. But however, the SMAP metric was worse. It shows that for some data sets, GNN cannot surpass the baselines. However, for commercial data set, GNN has performed better. So we presented the conversion of time series to a graph to construct the model, which can learn the underlying time series data structure. Further on, we outlined two types of time-sensitive relation strength functions to tie together three incoming inputs in the model. The model was configured to output both the next value prediction and model recommendation. The model is suitable for small data sets since it shows adequate results, even with a small training period. However, it is not robust for the data with a small number of entities or relations between entities, since inside the architecture, it relies heavily on the generated relation graph. Uh, 